All right, chapter one, lesson seven is constant rate of change, okay? A computer programmer charges customers per line of code written. Fill in the blanks with the amount of change between the consecutive numbers. So for lines of code going from 50 to 100 to 150 to, uh, uh, to 200, how is it changing each time? Good. Yes, we are adding 50 each time. Very good. All right, so how about the cost? From 1,000 to 2,000 to 3,000 to 4,000, what are we doing? We're adding 1,000 each time. Is everyone with me? So now we're going to label the diagram with the terms line, or change in lines, change in dollars, and constant rate of change. Okay? So for a thousand, which one is that? That's the change in dollars. Very good. And then for the 50 lines, that is the change in li uh, lines. So then that means that 20 is the constant rate of change, okay? So how do you think we got that $20? How do you think we got that 20? Very good, very good. Because we had the cost, the cost over the lines in our original rate here, this would be, for the change, would be $1,000 over the uh, 50 lines. I'm just going to put an L there. And then if I change it to a unit rate by dividing by 50 in the numerator and the denominator, that is how we would get our $20 per line. Does everybody see that? Yes. All right, so today we're going to use a table to find a constant rate of change. Just like we did in our warm-up, we're going to look at this example here. It says, and you don't have to write this down. Oh, actually, I want you to write this part over here down. A unit rate, the rate of change is usually expressed as a unit rate. Okay? The rate of change is usually expressed as a unit rate. Okay? So, the table shows the amount of money a booster club makes washing cars for a fundraiser. We want to use the information to find the constant rate of change in dollars per car. All right, so here we're looking at the ratio it says here. What is the constant rate of change in dollars per car? You see that? So if I'm looking at the ratio, the ratio will be dollars or the change in the money in the numerator and the change in the cars in the denominator. So just like what we did on the warm-up where we were looking to see how each side of the table changes, here the money changes by adding 40 each time. The number of cars changes by adding 5 each time. So in our um, rate, we're going to have, in our, uh, yeah, in our rate, we're going to have $40, $40 for five cars. And then to change it to a, a rate of change, we're going to change it to a unit rate, which is $8 per car. So that means that the number of dollars earned increases by $8 for every car washed. All right, so let's do this got it problem. Down here it says, the table shows the number of students that buses can transport. Use the table to find the constant rate of change in students per school bus. So here, what we are comparing is uh, students per school bus, right? So that means that our original rate will be students per bus, right? students 
her bus. Okay, so now we want to look to see how it changes in the table. So, for students, let's see. Well, actually, here's buses. That's an easy one, right? How do I go from 2 to 3, 3 to 4, and then 4 to 5? We're adding 1 each time, right? Plus 1 every time, adding 1. So now we want to go to the table and look to see how the number of students is changing. Now, to find the difference between each one of those, all you have to do is subtract. Very good. So you're going to subtract 216 minus 144. And what do you get? So that's changing by adding 72, right? So we want to check to see if, this, if the change is the same in the others. So you're going to do 288 minus 216 plus 72. And 360, oops, 360 minus 288, that difference is also a change of 72. Very good. So you're going to go ahead and write this. This is how you're going to show your work. You're going to write plus 72 on the table. You're showing your work on the table just like that. So now we need to put this into our ratio or into our rate. So the number of the change in the students is what? 72 each time. So that's 72. I'm going to put ST for students. Over how many buses? Over one bus. Very good. Now this is your rate of change. It is already a unit rate, so we don't have to simplify anything. Is everybody clear with that? Mm -hmm. Look up here. Here we had 290 miles in 30 minutes. So in order to get to the rate of change, to the, to the uh, constant rate of change, we are going, we would have to simplify changing it to a unit rate. Does that make sense? So this, and I want you to circle it and write what that is. This is your rate of change. So your rate of change is 70, 72 students per bus. So now we're going to use a graph. It says you can also use a graph to find a constant rate of change and to analyze points on the graph. So here it says the graph represents the distance traveled while driving on a highway. We want to find the constant rate of change. So I want you to write this part down right here where it says to find to find the rate of change, you want to pick any two points on the line. And then once you find the two points on the line, then you're going to have to find some differences. Okay? So you're going to subtract. So here, these folks chose 0, 0, and 1, 60. Okay? And once again, we are comparing miles to hours. Okay, so on the first one, um, for cha the change in miles, see here's the distance, there's the miles, and we're looking at 60 minus 0. 60 minus 0. In those ordered pairs, what value is that? Those are the y values. So I want you to make sure that you know which one you are talking about. So this is the y value. So 60 minus 0, those are the y values. That's going to give us 60 miles. You'll also know that 60 minus 0 are the y values because um, those are the distances, right? And the distance is on the y-axis. Is everybody clear with that? So when we are looking at the change in, um, in the hours, let me highlight those for you. We're subtracting 1 minus 0. And those are the x values. Very good. So those are going to be the x values. And of course, 1 minus 0 is 1. So the rate of change 
is 60 miles per one hour. That is your rate of change. All right, for this example here, it says explain what the points 0, 0 and 0 and 1, 60 represent. Well, if you're at 0, 0, what does that mean? That means, doesn't mean nothing. It means at 0 hours, how far have you traveled? 0 miles, right? And then the 1, 60 means that after 1 hour, how far did you travel? 60 miles. Is everybody clear with that? All right, so the ordered pairs on the graph represents something in a real life situation. All right, so let's do this got it problem together. Okay, we want to use the graph to find the constant rate of change in miles per hour while driving, driving in the city. Now, you don't have to, um, well, you should have this, this graph in your spiral, so you can either cut it out of your textbook and tape it into your spiral, or you can sketch it, okay? So, the, uh, let's see, the rate that we are comparing is miles per hour. So, we're looking at miles per hour. I would like for you to make sure that you write down your, um, your rate. So, which value tells me the miles, the X or the Y? The Y tells me. Remember that? We just talked about that in the other example. And then the hour tells me the, the X values. Very good. So now we're going to choose two numbers, okay? Um, two points, sorry, two points on the graph. And I'm going to choose something other than 0, comma 0. So I'll choose those two points, okay? So we're choosing 2, comma 60 and 3, comma 90. So, to find the differences, all we're going to do is we're going to subtract our y values. Which one are the y values? The 90 and 90. Good. So, we're going to have 90 minus 60, and that's going to give me 30. And that's 30 miles, right? Then, for the x values, we're going to subtract what, what minus what? 3 minus 2. Very good. 3 minus 2, and that's going to give me 1 hour. So that, that is your rate of change. 30 miles per hour is your rate of change. Rate of change. All right, so somebody asked, what's the difference between a rate of change and a constant rate of change? Well, if you look at this, at this graph, this is a straight line, right? So that means at every point on this line, the, the rate of the change will always be the same. And that is a constant rate of change. If you have a constant rate of change, then you have a linear diagram or a linear equation or a linear function. If it is not a constant rate of change, then it's not going to be a straight line. All right, so example D says explain what the points 0, 0 and 1, 30 mean. So here at 1, I mean 0, 0, what does that mean in this diagram? Very good. 0, 0 means that um, they're traveling 0 miles in 0 hours. And then 1, 30 means they traveled 30 miles in 1 hour. Very good. All right, in the last example, it says the table and the graph show the hourly charge to rent a bicycle at two different stores. Which store charges more per bicycle? So here we have pedal pen rentals in the table and we have super cycles in the graph. So if you look, you can see you can see from the table the cost in dollars changes, it increases by 12 each time, and the hour increases by one each time. So, if we're looking at dollars per hour, 
for pedal rental rentals, we've got twelve dollars per every one hour. Okay. Then for super cycles, for super cycles, we have to look at the two points on the graph. So let's look at this point and this point. So this point is one comma eight. And this point is two comma sixteen. So if I'm doing dollars per hour on the graph, remember we're doing the change in the y values over the change in the x values. So when we subtract the y values, that's going to be 16 minus 8. And then when we subtract the x values, that's 2 minus 1. So our rate of change then will be $8 for one hour for the super cycles. So that means that um, pedal rentals charges more per hour to rent a bicycle.